if you, let's try to keep my mic open if we can, and then I'll be able to talk with Jesse. If you are, if, as a chopper goes around the side of the federal building, look at that shot, it is absolutely incredible. The side of the federal building has been blown off, Jesse. About, about, a third, about a third of the building has been blown away. Come on, boy. And smoke and debris and fire on the ground, downtown on the ground. Uh, just, just devastating. And we are, we are uncertain what caused the explosion this time to happen. Our 9 o'clock, we know the far away is Channel 9, that's a good, at least five miles downtown.
body, not even bring it on top of his chest, and he cut his, his arms open. He just kind of nodded to me. And he smiled, and I thought, you know, to end of that, you see something bright. You know, the compassion that this very quick man had for this child.
the wind has picked up out here. It is blowing down rain. The wind is blowing, and there you can see various things falling off the building. This is turning into an extremely dangerous situation now for people who are still alive inside that building and for the people trying to rescue them. Governor Keating, if you could step this way again, we want to find out the latest from you on uh, what you know about the rescue efforts down there. We just talked with that rescue worker who said that there's a wind trap in the basement. Gas explosion at a federal building in Oklahoma City. Very confusing as far as what happened. And I couldn't get very close, which bothered me. You know, I wanted to get as close as I could. And I'm not proud of it, but my first reaction was this must be someone in the Middle some East. Of our experts concurred that this was done by some foreign terrorists. The expectations that we were having as far as survivors and so on, we never lost them. As we arrived at that crisis, some folks from the city that told us that they had just pulled the person out of the building, which turned out to be the last survivor. We had a victory just a moment ago. We uh, arrived on the rescue of a 50 year old uh, out of that basement that had been trapped all day. Uh, to do that, uh, we had the body removing and the debris removing. That's a big percent, and that's something that. Uh, that's a rest of the rescue workers here. You don't give up hope if you're flying. I saw a lot of people on Friday and Friday and Friday. I thought about 10 at night, so they did not go to school. So many. That's what you told them. Probably across the door. Thank you for that. What can I do? Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're software. We're doing it. 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 Would there be a way, if you were able to get input as to what the floor plans were of the building itself, could you simulate what had then happened that would then perhaps advance the recovery efforts? Of this team of technicians that went uh, around the clock for a couple of days, they were able to simulate uh, the destruction that happened by also relating to what was still standing. And so that then uh, gave a, a sense of where gravity and explosion would pull uh, everything that was in arms way. The maps really came in useful in the uh, search and recovery effort. That, uh, instead of taking the full footprint of the building and trying to work your way around, uh, gave a uh, more quantitative uh, basis for the search and, and where to go first. We were told that most victims were found within uh, 15, 20 foot square of the last location. The word we got back is that did accelerate the uh, finding of, uh, of folks in that, that instance uh, that had perished. And they knew how the building collapsed. The power of the bomb went out like this off of the truck. The blast blew it up like this and then it, uh, the rebar gave way underneath. The rebar's hanging out, the rebar's hanging out and the rebar gets flattened like that. And it fell straight down. It hits like that and fractures and comes down and everything. Cascade. Some more over there. Cascade. The actual rubble pile size was around 7,000 square feet of rubble. 55,000 square feet of office space collapsed into 7,000 square feet of rubble. It looked like that.
Nothing seemed to interest him. Not even the television coverage of the bombing, playing in the jail. Didn't have any emotion. No emotion. In an unusual scheduling change, it would be days before McVeigh would see a courtroom for his arraignment over the traffic stop. In fact, I don't remember anybody getting up here that long. Federal investigators already had determined they wanted to question McVeigh in connection with the bombing. That delay allowed him to be traced right to the Noble County Jail. The first person called was an ATF agent. I said, Oklahoma Highway
if I would come upstairs or I'm going to meet with them. And then that Friday morning, that would have been the second Friday after the bombing, I got the call from First Christian Church that I needed to come down. And every notification team had a, a clergy person, had a mental health representative, uh, a psychologist or psychiatrist, a counseling person, uh, and a human director. They did the notification, um, and then I asked everyone to leave. That's the clergy and the um, medical of them were to leave um, so that family could express their grief because that's something they would not have done in front of these people. Word this morning, the efforts downtown may be shifting here. A careful piece-by-piece piece search for victims can soon give way to a faster operation aided by heavy machinery. Governor Frank Keating says the operation is shifting from search and rescue to search and recovery. There is simply no reason to jeopardize the safety or the lives of rescue workers when it appears that there are simply is no chance there's anybody living in them. Obviously, some people still hope that the likelihood is very, very remote. I remember the day that uh, the decision was made that we were moved to a recovery home. It was a tough decision to buy. You know, we had a briefing about it. You could hear a pin drop in the room. I had a lot of people wondering why I didn't make it quicker because uh, certainly after seven days or eight days or nine days, quite a bit of the hope that you're going to find any more life. We went 14 days in that kind of a mode. Probably the hardest thing about it is that we were not able to rescue Baba. any structure. AJ. So it's done? No, I think we go to a different level. Oh, yeah, this is like the driver's license. Oh, yeah. 
He didn't got caught for bombing for this, what he got. He got connected. He goes to the car is you, to you, to you, to That's the car that... This is the car that, uh, yeah, I think. It's the getaway car. The getaway car. Others unknown. Conspirators don't usually just invite 